Hey everybody, this is Wayne Pua from the Bomb Breakfast Podcast. Uh, we're we, we're going to be breaking down tonight the NFC North. Please like, subscribe uh, to our channel here. Leave any nice reviews, all kind of words, I'm sure, right? Uh, and yeah, let's get to it now. So the NFC North, we're going to go team by team, just kind of do a, a breakdown, see what what these teams are going to be looking like in this coming season. A lot of things have happened now with free agency and the draft. And I think the idea is let's just see what, uh, what these teams look like here. So going, starting with our Chicago bears, got to go alphabetical, right? Going with the Chicago bears here. Uh, obviously a lot of big things have happened. A <laughs> uh, new quarterback now with Caleb Williams at, at the, uh, at the helm, leading leading the, on the offensive side there, then also Shane Waldron uh, as the new offensive coordinator had a, did a lot of good things there with Geno Smith. So I think now going forth, you know, it'll just be interesting to see what Shane Waldron can really uh, put together there uh, in this offense with probably the best wide receiver core in the NFL. Uh, I, you know, that's kind of debatable. We'll see what happens. I think with Roman Dunze and. You know, he is oftentimes seen as like wide receiver one for some people, right? Like this is this was such a great wide receiver, wide receiver class in this previous draft, and Roman Dinsey was up there, and he is a smart, uh, smart wide receiver who can go get the ball. I think he had like a seventy percent uh, catch percentage for those contested catches this previous season, and you know he has a great catch radius, so. Uh, it'll be interesting interesting to see what they can do with him. Keenan Allen, who they added as well, who's like an age 32, but still one of the better route runners in the NFL, you know, big and is a consistent, you know, 1,000 yard type of wide receiver out there, uh, plays out of the slot. So I think, you know, he can fit in pretty well in this wide receiver, in that wide receiver room. And then obviously DJ Moore he had a career year last season. I think, you know, he can also play out of the slot as well, Mr. Yak. And I, I think this is just as good of a wide receiver wide receiver core as you could possibly have. Add in also uh, Cole Komet, who is, you know, some would say maybe top five, top ten tight end in the league right now. And, you know, with a decent line, not young, young line and up and coming. Uh, you know, Darnell Wright, obviously, I think is, the spearhead of the offensive line for the Bears, Donald Donald Wright. Uh, you know, last year's first round pick. Now going to the second season, uh, you know, struggled a little bit in the early season, but then really, I think he found his footing in the second half. And you know, Braxton Jones, Tevin Jenkins, adding in Col- Coleman Shelton uh, and Ryan Bates for some depth, and then we'll see what happens with Nate Davis. You know, I know I think he lost his mother this previous season, and that definitely is a big thing. Uh, for him so hopefully he you know uh, has recovered emotionally there and is able to focus in on on football so but yeah this this offense I think is going to be amazing uh, and then the running back room too can't forget that DeAndre Swift they added this offseason to pair along with Roche, Roshan Johnson and Khalil Herbert I think this is great this is as good as it's going to be I feel like for Bears fans and you know, a lot, there's a lot of optimism, optimism on the offensive side of the ball, and then yeah, let's we can definitely go into the defense too. Uh, Demarcus Walker, he's a he's a decent, formidable, like okay edge rusher. I think it's a stopgap right now. Um, you know, and uh, that was kind of the conundrum I think for a lot of Bears fans was you know we love Roman Dunze and such, but would it have made sense to trade back and? You know, get an edge rusher, maybe, but honestly, I don't know. You got when you when you got a player like Roman Dunes, you gotta you, you gotta take him, right? So, um, but yeah, like edge rusher, I think having Demarcus Walker there for like the first couple of downs, and then you know maybe they they do throw in uh, Austin Booker in there on the opposite side, kind of creating it more of a pass rush. Who you know, he's much more built up for the pass rush uh, as he's developing. So I and then. Javon Dexter on the DT position, I think, you know, for that three tech, he was a lot better in the second half of the season. And I think he can carry, hopefully, right, uh, some of that momentum in this coming season. 
Andrew Billings, he did really well too, uh, kind of just being that run stopper there. And then, you know, the, the linebacking crew, uh, I mean, TJ Edwards, talking about outplaying his contract, you know, he had one of the better overall seasons there. Tremaine Edmonds, uh, you know, kind of a Pro Bowl caliber type of linebacker. And then the secondary, you know, a lot of high draft capital picks there uh, with Jalen Johnson, who just, you know, he signed an extension. Jaquan Brisker, uh, who's a second round pick, uh, was a couple of seasons ago now. And, and you know, Tyreek Stevenson, really solid rookie year last season. It didn't really feel like a rookie season, actually, now that I think about it, but he did really well. And, you know, they added in uh, Kevin uh, Biard in free agency, kind of re replacing Eddie Jackson. So I think they're really just, from the offensive standpoint, defensive standpoint, this is as good of a Bears team as we've seen in recent years. You know, am I predicting them to move on and win the Super Bowl year one of the Caleb Williams era? Hard to say on something like that, but I, I would be very optimistic as a Bears fan. Um, I think I'm going with like a 10 win season. That's what I'm anticipating. You look at Matt Eberflus, what he was able to do with keeping the, the team focused as they were struggling on early on the season last season. Now, you know, new offense, Shane Waldron, hopefully he can do, hopefully he knows how to call plays appropriately, especially on those, you know, key downs. I think that was like one thing uh, that our previous uh, offensive coordinator really struggled with. And I think going into this season, the Bears are, are just better off overall and with the weapons they got too. You know, we'll see exactly what happens, but I'm very optimistic to see uh, the Bears succeed. I, I think there was, you know, some speculation or some thoughts on, you know, is Caleb Williams going to be breaking all of the Chicago Bears rookie uh, quarterback expectations or records? Yeah, I think that I think that's a safe bet for for them. Um, and then obviously adding in Tory Taylor, <laughs> the, the punt god here at uh, the fourth round pick that they spent. I think that was a great move, you know, it, from uh, everything I've been reading and, and listening to and watching, basically. Tory Taylor was basically the the punting equivalent of a Caleb Williams, like a once in a generational punter, which is funny to say. But I think this is as good of a team as you can possibly that we've had of recent years, and I'm just excited uh, for the Bears here. So, um, but yeah, I'm thinking like ten wins. I I think that's very reasonable. Uh, seeing if Caleb Williams can get that CJ Stroud kind of numbers, that's what I'd like to see. But you know, that's definitely a, a kind of a bull take. I think for that, for him to like throw for like 40, 400 yards or something like that, you know, I'd like to see a 4,000 yard pass rusher or not pass rusher, passing record from Caleb Williams' rookie year. But I'll try to be realistic. I think maybe he throws 3,600, 3,700. That's what I would like to see. You know, maybe 25 touchdowns. I would be content with something like that and then some solid D. And I think that equivocates to 10 wins for the Bears here. Um, and then is moving on to, again, going alphabetical here from the city names, it's going to go to the Detroit Lions, uh, Detroit Lions, you know, added in some free agents here, uh, on the defensive side of the ball, you know, they needed some pass rushers. I don't think they fully addressed that, but they did beef up the defensive line. Marcus Davenport, you know, former first round pick, not really the best pass rusher, but we'll see if he is able to kind of break loose a little bit having Aiden Hutchinson on the opposite side. Then they also added in uh, DJ Reader as well and he, from the Cincinnati Bengals. was kind of that staple there, but he's not really a much of a pass rusher. So again, uh, it feels like they're really kind of beefing up on the, on, on, the, on the defensive line, but much more about you know tackling and run stopping a little bit more. So uh, we'll see if they are, so, if they are able to, to generate that pass rush. And, that's where I have some doubts with the Detroit Lions right now. And why didn't they, why didn't they get an edge rusher or some sort of pass rusher this off season to kind of address that? But at the same time, you know, you got to have faith, I think, with the front office and kind of what they're building there. And and it, you know, there's the rest of their team, the rest of their defense did get better. Their secondary, you know, which I'll kind of get to. I think uh, it's one of the better ones. You know, they added a lot of young talent there. They're going to get. Emmanuel Mosley back, who's I think he's torn his ACL like the past couple of years 
we'll see if he actually does play here. But you know, Eddie and Carlton Davis, you know, said Brian Branch, uh, and then Kirby Joseph still, and then drafting uh Terry and Arnold as well as uh Ennis Rakestraw Jr. I mean, I think that's a solid draft that they had, solid haul uh from the defensive side of the ball. But you know, we'll see. I think with exactly what I mentioned before about their pass rush, I think that was definitely something that kind of hurt them this past season and was really like their Achilles heel. So if they can, uh, you know, get some sort of pass rush on a consistent base- basis, then this team can, I think, optimistically have those Super Bowl aspirations. They made the NFC Championship last season kind of without that pass rush, but having that pass rush really is an X factor there. So, um, and then, I mean, the rest of their team, their offense, pretty much the same, I think, right? <laughs> Uh, they did resign Amon Ross St. Brown to, you know, a, a contract extension there. But, you know, a lot of this, the DNA is based off the that offensive line, running the ball, good tight end play with Sam Laporta, who had a really, really, really good uh, tight end rookie season. And now going to year two, he might be more of a feature there. So, you know, uh, him pairing up with Amon Ross St. Brown, maybe James Jamison Williams, maybe he takes the next step. Maybe he develops more of that route tree. He was definitely much more of that, you know, fly route, go route type of wide out. But if if teams are playing, you know, too too safety deep, I think maybe he can help out with that and uh do maybe some more curl routes and kind of develop how Terry Kill developed a little bit, because he definitely has the speed to be that X factor, but you know this this team. Its makeup is definitely built on the run, ball control. Jared Goff not making those mistakes, being able to read the defense and kind of dissecting the defense there, and just solid offensive play. So, um, you know, the only way that they can build off from last season is if they make the Super Bowl. But again, a lot of things I think uh, uh, will ha- would have to happen in order for that to in order for that to occur. I, w- I would think so. But overall, I think solid offseason from the Lions. But I think the one thing, like I mentioned before, addressing the pass rush, uh, I think they didn't really did too much there. So, And then going to the Green Bay Packers, you know, I, I don't know what to say about them because I really don't want to care about them. But, you know, they did... <laughs> Man, they did Aaron Jones a little dirty there. I feel like uh, adding in Josh Jacobs. You know, I don't know if I fully agree with this decision, but I guess it kind of makes sense. I don't know if it's because Josh Jacobs is just younger. I think he's like three years younger than Aaron Jones. But honestly, I, I liked what I saw from the from the production level of Aaron Jones, and I think he complements also what they have with AJ Dillon there. So you know. We'll see exactly what happens and occurs here. Josh Jacobs didn't have the best season last season, but second half of the season did a little bit better and, you know, now has a more of an offensive scheme to work with, I think, compared to last season. So uh, maybe it is an upgrade, but yeah, you know, Josh Jacobs had great seasons la- uh, pre- in previous years. He was, you know, the leading rusher, I think, uh, one or two seasons. So has that X factor potential, but yeah, this previous season just was a dud. So. Uh, that being said, Jordan Love obviously is going to be the focal point here with the wide receiver crew. Uh, you know, it's a young wide receiver crew still, but he, you know, second half of, the, of this previous season really developed a chemistry more so of, especially yeah, with Jaden Reed, who I think broke like several Packer rookie season records there and really was kind of their ace, you know, a little bit of like an Amara St. Brown actually. And Pairing him up with, you know, Romeo Dobbs, Christian Watson. Obviously, those were the big, you know, the the big names there. And then uh, Dottanian Wicks as well. I mean, it's a solid, it, as sort of a young, like, I don't know, under 25, 26-year-old wide receiver career as you could potentially find in the NFL. Uh, and then Luke Musgrave, you know, solid tight end. And then their offensive line, probably underappreciated, but they – they they they're really solid all around. I think you know, even even after they've lost uh, David Bakhtari, but Bakhtari hasn't really played. You know the past couple of seasons, he's just been injury riddled. So it totally makes sense for why they kind of 
you know, moved on from him there. Uh, you know, Rasheed Walker, is he the long-term solution? I don't know, but I think he's kind of like the equivalent, you know, of equal value, I think, of like the Bears with like Braxton Jones, honestly. So, you know, formidable, but they did add Jordan Morgan in the draft. You know, we'll see if he is the answer there at left tackle. But I think from what I've read about Jordan Morgan is he's he probably needs a little bit more development, so maybe doesn't start like day one. But um, that definitely is a will see is something to keep an eye on. I out on the on the defensive side of the ball, a lot of the same names, but they did I think beef up their overall defense. You know, adding in Edring Cooper, uh, the top linebacker in the NFL draft. And then also adding in Javon Board, who I think was probably, if not like the best safety in the draft for one of the top one or two. I think him, Cooper DeGene, um, you know, in terms of uh, uh, Javon Board, like against the pass, I think he was like had like a quarterback rating against him in the 30s or something. So like really solid uh, safety. And then also Xavier McKinney, they add in the free agency. I mean, this is good of a defense, I think, from the, Packers, as you've seen, I think they've upgraded to pair up with again a lot of the a lot of returning starters that they had in previous years. Uh, you know, I think they lost Devondre Campbell, but honestly, you know, adding in Edron Cooper, I think that's a good business management type of move there. You know, linebackers these days, you kind of just uh, draft draft one at, you know, instead of paying some of them. So I think that's just the way that they're that they're going here. Um, so. Honestly, I, yeah, this this Green Bay Packers team, I feel like, is going to be better. Again, still a young team, though. <laughs> I think they're still the youngest NFL fran- or team in the or youngest team in the NFL by age. So, uh, but yeah, they proved up a lot, a lot. They showed their grit, I think, from last season. So, uh, really streaky, though. I think that's a key thing with Packers: is can they be consistent? You know, they had uh stretches where they I think they lost like three games or four games in a row and then they will win three games in a row uh, a couple of times in the season. I think they won their last three games. So it's like they were just up and down like a yo yo. You just did not know what 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 kind of Packer team you were getting. Uh they had some injuries here and there just like any other team in the NFL. But hey if Jordan Love can perform kind of like how he did last season again on a consistent basis, this team can definitely put up that challenge, you know, against the Detroit Lions for the division. So, um, but yeah, a lot of positive things I think happened for the Packers here this off season in the free agency and draft. And I think they're setting themselves up for a successful uh, season in 2024, 2025. And then last but not least, you know, this Minnesota Vikings team, they signed Aaron Jones. They signed Jonathan Grenard. Uh, you know, kind of had the exchange, I guess, of edge rushes there with Daniel Hunter going to the Texans, and they you know, added in a little bit of secondary depth there. Shaq Griffin, you know, played uh, the the cornerback. I think he came from Carolina Panthers, but was a little banged up. But you know, when he was at the Seahawks, really solid cornerback. So that that defense for the Vikings, I don't think they lost too much of a step there, even even though they lost Daniel Hunter. To be honest with you, so. Um, really solid overall. Overall, still, I feel like uh, you know some pretty solid. I think linebacker linebackers there, and then yes, you know decent secondary. Harrison Smith, I think he's still a stud. Just you know, I think the whole thing has got got to remain healthy here. Um, but you know, good coaching overall with Kevin O'Connell. I think that's going to be you know always a big factor there for the Vikings. I think he just knows how to manufacture that offense. You're going to, I guess, the quarterback position. Obviously, Sam Darnold, he's the new quarterback there, at least kind of that lame duck quarterback. You know, everybody's going to be keeping their eyes out or having their time ticking, their time tickers for to figure out when JJ McCarthy is going to be you know, kind of coming in there. Is he going to start immediately? Is he going to wait maybe like five, six games? I, you know, I, I'm probably going to think that. I, that's where, you know, if I'm going to place a bet, I'd probably think he. Waits maybe five six games, and then you know we'll see what happens there from there. But you know they they did Aaron, add Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones, I think he's what twenty nine years old, which is like ancient for a running back. But he is his game I think translates fairly well uh, 
you know, uh, as, as time goes on, he can catch out of the backfield, which I think is a key thing. And, you know, they had some inconsistent play at running back. So I think, you know, they've improved uh, in this position, this off season. The, the one thing about the, the Vikings, you know, going on their, you know, as I'm looking at their offense, I don't think they have as much wide receiver depth after Justin Jefferson and Jordan Addison. Uh, obviously, hey, that's two wide receivers out of the crew, but everybody else, like if one of them goes down, which, you know, they did this past season, that's going to be a lot, I think, for, say, J- you know, J.J. McCarthy is, is starting for him to throw to, you know, Jordan Addison's there. It's like, great. They double cover Jordan Addison, uh, Jordan Addison, you know, Justin Jefferson is injured. Uh, yeah, they just don't have too much, I think, to throw apart from there. So that's definitely where I have some questions of, how this team will progress if you know Justin Jefferson does get hurt. Uh, so Justin Jefferson, he's honestly he's going to be where he goes. This team will go, I think, at least in this season. Uh, their offensive line is pretty decent overall. Like I don't think there's too many complaints there. They're solid, just I think from left tackle to right tackle, honestly. So, but um, you know, having uh, I think a lack of depth at wide out and. Uh, having Justin Jefferson kind of just being like the guy, you know, not, I want to say the only guy, Jordan Addison definitely can you know, create separation and such, but having Justin Jefferson is that X factor. He is the X factor there. So um, we'll make life a lot easier for JJ McCarthy when he does take over. Uh, but, you know, when will that be exactly? And what situation will he be coming in? Uh, that's, I think time will tell for that. So, you know, this team was seven and 10. Last season, maybe they do take a, a little, a little bit of a step back. Uh, you know, maybe they just said, "Hey, look, this is a developmental year for Sam Darnold, or not Sam Darnold, maybe uh, for JJ McCarthy. Uh, let's kind of, you know, w- have him on the sidelines for the first couple games, maybe five, six games, and then let's let's bring him in. Let's see what see what he's got it after that. So that's where I feel like, yeah, maybe maybe they are around that. They have the same record as they have last season. Maybe they go six. Because six and eleven, that's kind of where I'm seeing them uh, this season here. So, um, but yeah, I think overall this division, there's a lot to like uh, in terms of its parity. I do think that the Minnesota Vikings, you know, they're, in terms of their off season, we're losing Kirk Cousins, that was I think a major blow for them. So I think they're they're going to drop some of the games here. But honestly, like I feel like both the or, uh, the rest of the teams of the NFC North, the Chicago Bears, the Detroit Lions, and the Green Bay Packers, I think they all got better. So you know, we'll see exactly, obviously, injuries and such, and who knows what happens <laughs> in the NFL from season to season. But I think uh, we're going to see a lot of exciting football happen this coming season from the, all that. So, um, And yeah, I think that's just my breakdown of the NFC North. So Let me know what you think. Uh, Leave a comment, like, and subscribe. We'd love to hear any feedback that you have. And yeah, tune into the next episode. I'm going to drop next week. I'm going to look at uh, the NFC East here. So thank you. Uh, This is Wayne from the Ball and Breakfast Podcast.